That's what you need to do when you sign up for OnlyFans. When you sign up to be a thought, make it seem like you love it. Because we know you're not making no money. Average registered OnlyFans creator makes only $180 a month. That's the average. So we're not discussing L in that, obviously, but that is the average. Making about $2,500 a month puts you in the top 1%, which adds up to $15 an hour, which is the same or less than McDonald's pays. What is good? This is the Furious Robinson podcast. I'm your host, Furious, your curator of conversation, wordsmith aficionado, voted most likely to have an amazing first date. Shout out to you. Clap it up if you're here. Hit the like button. Drop a comment. You see the planes. We're trying to hit 11,000 subs, so tap in early. But anyways, I'm dabbling in the dark arts because these are diabolical deeds. To me, I don't respect this type of behavior. Can we stop pandering? Can we stop the pandering when we get around women? If we're around women that are doing wild things in the streets, just let them know it's okay. Honesty is the best policy. Is that not what they say? Can we not just let them know what's up? Because I don't get why Logan Paul and his sidekick Mike didn't decide to give this girl Sophia some healthy feedback. Go ahead and give Sophia Franklin some healthy feedback, all right? Let's let's really dive into it. Now we've seen this insane pendulum swing in the complete opposite direction with red pill where women are being slut shamed every day you're a whore you're a whore if you've ever posted like a picture with a bathing suit on you are a, you are not you know able to get into a relationship or be married by a, a man with any kind of brain mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. like it's it's a the pendulum swing has been wild this is where the pandering starts so bring in the pandering bring it in come on lay on the butter like, yo, we have to chill. A lot of women are trying to monetize in the space. Don't make it seem like women are just out and about having fun. Maybe they post a pic here. Maybe they're a little bit promiscuous on New Year's. Maybe they're showing off for their man. No, these women are monetizing and giving out things that we do not need. Nothing is left to the imagination, Mike. If you haven't looked online, if you haven't checked your Explore page, Everyone is naked. And if you don't think so, go look right now. I'm sure you'll see a woman half naked monetizing off of either her OnlyFans. She's selling a book. She has some PDF workout, something. They're all selling products, whatever you want to call it. But don't make it seem like women are just innocent and going about their day-to-day -day life. No, it's not like she's a lawyer, but then you see her in Cabo celebrating on a vacation. No, that's not how it is. It's like she's going to Cabo to get content, but she's with Dan Bilzerian on his yacht. Like, come on. Like, I hate when these guys pander because when they pander, it makes it seem like it's okay. Like, this is a natural, normal thing. No, we are all desensitized to slut and whore conversations now. Anything that looks abnormal is no longer abnormal. It's all normal now. You could be half naked outside. You could be on your IG busting it wide open. It don't matter because as men, we're going to pander. Hence, Mike, I'm not going to pander, but they are. And you'll see throughout this whole entire conversation, they continue to pander to this girl, Sophia. I'm like, yo, I know you didn't make the caller daddy cut. <laughs> Any talk with Sophia? I never spoke to her again after that. Really? Uh, yeah. Nothing. That's it. Nothing. Not even a like a fighter. It was just nothing. God. If she were to reach out, would you would you take the call? I don't think she would ever reach out. I don't know if there's anything to like say. I think mm. it's kind of done. And and what someone said this the other day, which hit me, it was like I've now been doing the show on my own longer than we did yeah. it together. Yeah. Right. Right. So that's kind of like it feels so far away. And I know you guys probably feel that with business stuff. Like when you're in a new era, like. That's all I can think about is this is my baby and I'm producing it and I'm trying to make it the biggest. So it feels like so long ago that that happened that I don't even think about think it, about it that yeah. way. You think yeah. if, there w if it didn't blow up the way it did, there would have. I think it was going to end eventually. regardless. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we had personal conversations like this was so bad behind the scenes. Like it was going to end. Like, yo, Alex Cooper kicked you to the curve. I'm not going to hold you. I'm going to call a spade a spade because they didn't want to do it. Alex elevated. Alex on the Fallon show. Alex is out here getting multi-million dollar deals on Spotify. Come on now, we elevate and we doing a thing. That's how you're supposed to move in business and operate. But Sophia somehow ended up on the Impulsive Podcast getting pandered to. Nah. If you out here busting it wide open, just be real with it. Just take ownership of being a trish. That's all you got to do. 
help everyone out in the scenario because we don't want to treat you like that good quality woman that we're actually looking for. No, we want to take you to a hotel. We want to be with you in Miami or Vegas or LA. That's it. You're never coming home for Christmas ever. Like let's stop playing games, but they're going to continue to pander. I'm going to continue to point it out. Like let's stop playing. Yourself, do you, do you go? Uh, am am I ran through? Like, d why is <laughs> why is this guy saying this? And is is he right? Um, in that that particular example, no. You can't tell me that you're mentally not distraught by thousands of people, not men, women as well, not necessarily attacking you, but giving you healthy feedback, like telling you, like, yo, this is not cool. This is not maybe what you should perpetuate to the youth. Maybe you should take another route in the way you want to make money. Maybe your moral compass is just a little bit skewed, but it's cool. I understand things come at you online. People are trolling. People are saying different things and you know, that's not really you. I get it, but it's all about the perception of you, the perpetuation of being a whore, of being a thought, of being a treesh, of being a 304 as the red pill would say. So when I look at it like that, yo, it's warranted. Some of the conversation is warranted, but women don't want to have it. And that's cool. Monetize off your skill set, but take what comes with it. Have accountability. If you want to sell your box online, have accountability in what comes with that. You're accepting it once you sign up. Once you try to fleece and finesse perverts, weirdos, and simps out of their bread, you got to take what comes with it. There's another militia of men behind them like, hey, this ain't cool. We want to stand up for our guys. We want to try to help them out. We want to maybe shame them out of spending money for OnlyFans when porn is free, when Reddit is right there. I don't get it. You, you, you can't make a lot of this up, but it's here. It's for content. It's for fodder. We're going to talk about it. We're going to speak on it. So looking at it like that, can everyone just take a step back and look at what we're giving out, what we're putting it out into the streets? Nah, okay, cool. So I'm gonna speak on it. Mentally, these women are down bad. They're tarnished. Yo, if every guy is in your DMs talking about you got a moose knuckle, it's over with. If every guy's in your DMs talking about gobble the glizzy, it's over with. If every guy you meet is trying to fly you out, damn well knowing they just wanna hit first quarter, it's over with, you're mentally done. You may have two or three friends and they're all telling you, girl, just keep going. Do it for the money. Do it for another couple of years and you'll get out the game. No, it's over for you. You're going to be here forever. We know Sophia Franklin as being the Gluck Gluck 3000. That's your nickname? You an eater? You're an eater in real time. I cannot take you seriously. I'm sorry because in this entire conversation, I realized they were pandering to the umpteenth degree. You don't got to pander like this. I get it. Everyone is well off. Everyone has money. Everyone is privileged inside of this conversation. But stepping out into the real world, Logan, step out into the real world, Sophia. Mike, you the sidekick. You could do whatever you want. Yo, you got to realize people live in real time. If you out here gobbling every dick you see, going on every adventure you can go on, asking dudes how much money they make and checking their bank accounts, other men are not going to take you seriously. They're not. They're only looking at you as an object. They only want to smash in real time. You are now a fetish. You've turned yourself into a fetish. I think you don't really realize that, but once you start talking about all your sexual escapades, men start to put you on a pedestal. Why? I don't know, but hey, let them do their thing. Once they put you on that pedestal, you are now a fetish. That's why a lot of women can sell things online because they're giving up some type of mystery or fantasy. That's it. I wonder if I was around her, what would happen? If we ever met, what could I do? Maybe we could be together. That's how they think, I'm assuming. I'm assuming that's the mind of a simp. So when I look at it like that, all this pandering is unnecessary behavior. This is teaching a master class. Logan, teaching a master class in simpology. Stop the madness, sir. You don't have to pander like this. I know you got Nina Agdahl on your arm. I know Dylan Dennis just took her through the ringer. But yo, 
you ain't have to pander like this. Mike, I have no idea, bro. You dated Lena Paul, bro. And you look at her now. If you look at Lena Paul now, not to get off track, if you look at Lena Paul now, after coming off of Mike, bro, come on now. I'm not going to insinuate anything, but she looks down bad. <laughs> these dudes... Bro, these dudes are terrible. I can't deal with it. Men are kind of like pissed at women, right? Yes. Because years, like a few years ago, it was the feminist movement, like having another uprising, like equality, all those things, which are great. Great. And you think men didn't like that, and so they're they're going the other way. I think they're a couple people end. spearheaded a movement Absolutely. that was in the opposite direction, and a bunch of young impressionable people then followed and picked, picked up, up on the it. torch. And, and that's that's kind of where we're at now. And mark my words, it's going to go in the opposite direction in another four to five years. And yeah, we, we'll be having the exact opposite conversation, and we'll yeah. have you on then as well. And why I, I feel like I'm the antichrist <laughs> for <laughs> those oh, God. for those young impressionable men who. I hate women. Well, it's like why are they why are they angry? Is the other is the other question. <laughs> I told you, I told you, the pandering continues. They continue to pander. Yo, nobody is mad. Nobody's upset. We're actually telling you, like, yo, we don't actually like your type. There's a type of woman that we know only get off for money, adventures, and gullible things. You pull up in the Porsche, you get hit. You staying at the one hotel in South Beach, you're going to tag. You take her out to Carbone for the night, it's easy. Lay the butter on it. Come on now. What are we talking about? So don't say men are mad. No. The thing is, and the tough part about it is, these women somehow, some way, got their expectations up to the 18th level, the 80th floor. And when I'm looking at it like that, it's because that guy led with money. He spent all his money on you on the first two dates, three dates to get you into the sheets. He wanted to complete the mission, but then you run into guys and they're calling them incels. I don't know what that term means. I'm not really going to look it up. We maybe will maybe dive into that. But all I'm saying is you're running into quality men that now want to actually get to know you and getting to know you does not involve money. It doesn't. Getting to know you as a woman involves no money. But because you came from some dude named Eric and he spent $8,000 on you and took you to 11, we don't care. I'm just trying to get to know you as a woman. Can you cook? Are you a nurturing person? Do you wake up early and get things done? Are you caring? Like, that's it. But no, I have to drop bread on you. I got to take you to the Japanese spot. I got to take you to the private showing. We got to pull up to a couple of different places in the Porsche just to let it be known we flexing. You got to put it on your gram. Hit the like button, drop a comment, and subscribe if you're confused as well. I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> like, yo, like help me understand because you think by nature I should just treat you good because you have a fat ass or you give good head, or whatever the thing is. I don't know what the thing is, but I'm not paying you because you have an aesthetic feature. It's not a fetish. I'm not on fetish time. I'm not fantasizing you. Because that's how I look at it sometimes. I'll run into dudes that only date a specific type of woman, whether it's white, whether it's Asian, whether it's a Latina, whatever it is, it's always a fetish. It always comes down to a fetish, something they saw, something they heard. I'm like, yo, when you operate like that as a man, you really operating as a munch. You ready to get cucked out. You ready to get finessed. Yo, approach women and judge them on who they are on face value, the things that come out of their mouth. But no, you want to pander. You want to make sure you get to the mission at the end of the night. So you're going to say whatever you need to say to get it done. I get it. Whatever. Like we've been there. We've all done it. I'm not going to be a hypocrite and say, I've maybe never been in these situations, not pandering, but doing whatever I needed to do to have a good night. Sure. But no, once you start to elevate, once you start to realize a lot of these women, not even it, a lot of these women got C minus box. It's just like, uh, whatever. Keep it. I'm good. 
if you went into a date knowing the only reason the guy was there to date you was because he thought you had a nice box or a fat ass or whatever. I know that's the only reason. No, it's not. What there's a lot of guys out there okay. who are looking for partners. Right. So 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 it depends on what type of world you're in. If you're looking to just fuck and go on a couple flyouts, then that conversation has merit. But if you're looking for a partner for life and your first question from them is how much money is in your bank account, can you see why that would be looked at as a bit as a bit strange? Okay. We understand who you are now. We understand if men are only objectifying you and you think in your mind they only want the box, it's because that's all you're presenting. Like, yo, why is that not common logic to most women? If you in the gym, busting it wide open, that's all I'm thinking about. I'm trying to knock it. Tell me what exercise this is. Just help me out. Ladies, help me out. What, what exercise is this? Come on now, stop playing. What, what are we doing here? Like, what are we doing? If she's presenting that, I just want to hit. If you go in the gym and your first thought is to put your moose knuckle in the camera, I'm looking at you like a goofy. I'm looking at you like you're a nut. Like, it's not even attractive at a certain point. Like, it goes past the level of attraction. It now goes into, oh... You're trying to monetize off of the only thing you know how. So that leads me to believe you're down bad. If you didn't look good, you would have no other skill set in life. Like your life is valued. God, <laughs> your life is valued on your moose knuckle. Like what exercise? Just help me out. Just tell me, please. What exercise is this? Come on, please. Somebody help me out. Drop a comment. What exercise? Is I don't get it. When I look at it like that, you can't blame men for things you signed up for. You adopted the system. Like, yo, you can't come to McDonald's and start bringing over Burger King recipes. It's not going to work like that. Like, you can't come to Chick-fil-A and start acting mad like you, you don't want to be here. No, I need grade A customer service every single day. I don't care where if you were at Carl's Jr. before this. I don't care where you came from before this. When you get to Chick-fil-A, act amazing. Act like you love it here. Act like this $10 an hour is your life changer. That's what you need to do when you sign up for OnlyFans. When you sign up to be a thought, make it seem like you love it. Because we know you're not making no money. And I don't have any issue with adults doing what they want, entering sex work. However, unfortunately, I think the way in which OnlyFans is often discussed in public makes it out to be this quick get rich scheme. It reeks of a pyramid scheme. And oftentimes young girls find themselves following this fool's gold rush and not really understanding the consequences of it. So here's some information that I feel like young girls should arm themselves with. The average registered OnlyFans creator makes only $180 a month. That's that's the average. So we're not discussing L in that, obviously, but that is the average. Making about $2,500 a month puts you in the top 1%, which adds up to $15 an hour, which is the same or less than McDonald's pays. We know dudes are talking to you crazy and we don't care because, yo, when men have to go outside and sign up for bullshit, we got to sign up to be on roofs. We got to sign up to pave concrete. We got to sign up for all these things we don't want to do. We knock it out and we get it done. Ain't no playing no games. Ain't no complaining. Yo. So when you sign up to be a trish, sign up and take accountability for everything that comes with it. Turn into a stoic, as they would tell us to do. Like, I don't get these women, bro. It's not, it's not, you can't have it both ways. You can't meet the man of your dreams, Prince Charming, and then be on a boat with Dan Bilzerian. It's not going to work like that no more. We've woken up. And I'm not even going to put me into the situation. I can just see what's going on in the streets. I'm not dating any of y'all. I refuse. <laughs> not even close. I'm not going nowhere near y'all. Y'all are a detriment to my life. A net negative. You can't tell me Shorty's not an L. I don't care how much money she has. In her mind... She doesn't understand what it really means to be a thorough joint, to be a quality woman. You can't tell, nobody can argue that point with me. I don't care what you say. This Sophia Franklin girl is a thought. And it's cool. I agree with it. Be a thought, be a trish. If you want to be a trish, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Use your skill set to the best of your ability. But then what you do have to do on the back end is remember, a lot of guys are now putting you in a boat of you have 8 million miles on your car. Your car is run down. Your car ain't going nowhere. 
I don't want to buy a car and then instantly have to start repairing it. Like, yo, when I buy a car, I want to drive it fresh off the lot. I want that new car smell. I want everything. I want to be able to do whatever I want to do in this car. Drive it to LA, to Vegas, to wherever I want to go. I'm driving far. Yo, stop the madness. Like, why are we all acting like this is normal? This wasn't normal five years ago. If I wanted to get a picture maybe five to ten years ago, you got a bag. You got you got to damn near cut your arm off and send it to the girl like, yo, look what I did. Now? Now? Oh, everywhere in the abundance. Nothing is left to the imagination. The amount of cheeks I see on my Explore page is dastardly. The amount of cheeks that are laid out in the abundance. Have you seen these women? These women online are giving it up in real time. And I'll help you out and put it on the screen. You can't tell me she's doing anything else after this is done. What does she go? What did, Does this go on her resume? Like, does she put this on LinkedIn? Come on. Like, what are we doing here? So as men, if we're not giving these type of women, and some dudes are taking it too far, some dudes are going off the deep end and calling these women all types of names, that I don't really agree with, but whatever, slight disclaimer. But you can't tell me a guy telling you this isn't cool and I won't date you is not normal. That's, we don't want this. It's It looks cool on paper, like it looks cool online, but if we actually meet you, it's like, it's not cool, it's not fun. I've run into these women before and sometimes it's just not it. Like I get it, once you get that neck, once you start blowing it back out, after a couple of weeks, it get kind of stale because these women don't have the best conversation because men are only objectifying them. Men are only trying to sleep with them all day. So what they're seeing is just negative after negative after negative. Where are they bringing that to? Right to you. You the king. You've been working on yourself. You've been in the gym. You've been trying to get right, trying to go to therapy. Whatever they've been saying out here, you've been trying to listen. Be a little bit more emotionally available. And still, still they want to make you cape and try to save her. Don't save these women. Leave them alone. You run into a joint with 200,000 miles. Let her keep putting that thumb out. Nobody's picking you up. Keep trying to hitchhike your way to a quality man. It's not going to happen. I'm tired of these women. I'm tired of these dudes pandering. Logan Paul, bruh, I get it. You with Nina, you got to adopt a whole new mindset around being a man. I'm sorry. Dylan Dennis called you out. You've accepted your role as being a munch. I get it. But please stop pandering to these women. You're messing it up for the youth because your joint is set. She's set for life. She's a model. She's a millionaire. She's attached to you. So she's a multimillionaire. Y'all are living in Puerto Rico. Y'all are good. But when you pander like this, it is weird and lame to me. It just is. I be partners with someone. I think, though, you guys have to be somewhat on the same level. How about that? Maybe. Is that fair? I think, I think with the paying stuff, like the right balance is like, I'm doing the majority of the lifting. But if we go to get coffee, sometimes you just jump in and put your car to the machine. That's like where I'm at. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. if they never, yes, if they never that. offer... Like if they're like invoicing you for Ubers, no, you know what I'm saying? When you flew them out on a trip and they have to get from the airport to the hotel and you spent $4,000 and they, they're like, yo, I took a hundred dollar Uber. Can you pay for it? You got a problem. Yes. Like the girl should throw in chip in just from a standpoint of like, yo, like I just want to show you that I'm, I'm invested in this as well that's, from, from the start. That's what I agree with. And that's how I date. Uh, like the, the, the quick first date rule just for anybody watches. Cause a lot of this should turn into value and I think we should try to deliver as much of that from a dating standpoint is like there you go Mike give us give us some value I want to know what Mike thinks from a value standpoint here we go if I bring a girl to a nice dinner for a first date when you go for a round of drinks afterwards just like two drinks they buy the drinks afterwards I've always thought that that was like a cool like little just one round like you buy a nice dinner okay. you go out you spend six five two, wow. who cares Applebee's 150 whatever mm -hmm. don't tell me Mike don't tell me Mike you done spent 600 if you spent I mean I guess these guys are gonna do whatever they need to do but $600 on a date is nuts if you go get two beers at the local pub after she, she's like y'all get you try to clean it like, up that's a yeah, cool yeah. little 
yes. first date dynamic. I, I mean, I think that's cool. I think on the first date, you want to pick up everything that's cool too. Yeah, for sure. But I think it's just more like a convenient. <laughs> Yo, she didn't listen to a word he said. Women do not care. No, no woman is picking up no damn bills. Like most of these women, they're not pulling out their cards. They're not paying for anything. They're not getting the second round, the second round, the third round. No, they're hanging out and they're there for a good time. And hopefully a long time. If you're a quality dude, if you can impress her enough with things, you have to buy enough drinks. You have to take it to a $600 dinner. He switched it up to Applebee's, but he meant that $600 dinner. So it's like, yo, do you really want to be around these women? Wasting your time, wasting your money, wasting your bread, all types of waste. Just, oh, God. And saying, because you and I are both fortunate and both have money. I just think it's a, I just think it's a cheat, like, low-key a cheat code for the women listening to this. Like, on that first date, if you, like, yeah, just something small, like, just to be like, yo, like, you know, like, let me get this one. Like, I'm telling you, the dude might not let you. But either he's not gonna let you and he's gonna be like, that was cool, or he's gonna let you and be like, that was cool. Like, Wait, there's you, no, would you, you can't really lose think a girl's there. cooler if she did that? If you were super into it's just her- Yes. Yes. The answer is yes. Because the reason why is reciprocity. Women aren't picking up any bills, any tabs. Trust me, if men actually felt like women were overly appreciating them on dates and picking up tabs and doing different things, they wouldn't be complaining. They wouldn't say going 50. Like, yo, they're going out and they're spending so much money, they're having to come back online and complain. And I respect you, bruv. I get it and I understand. My thought process is you shouldn't even be on dates if you're worried about the bill. Like, just respectfully, just don't go. Don't even waste your time. She's not worth it. If you got $1,000 in your bank account and you about to drop 200 on her, it's not worth it. Trust me, you could do something way better with that bread. So that's what she's saying. She's like, oh, is that really warranted? Does that really matter? Yes, because it's not done. It's not done at all. The show, I just think it's just like a show of like, yo, I, maybe the, like pull the, the rest the answer, of the room. Here's the answer. Bit. I'm going to answer for Mike. The answer is yes, it's cool. Also, it doesn't fucking matter at all. Completely okay, irrelevant. I, if she didn't, who gives a shit? He's going on a second date with the girl. That, that's what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. What like, you, what, yeah. So what some women fail to realize is reciprocity is key. If a guy is just giving and giving and giving and doing, it's cool. It's nice because most men can handle that, especially if they have bread. They've weathered those hard storms. They're very stoic. So a lot of things are just going to roll off their back. Easy, whatever. They'll handle it. They'll bust you down. It's cool. They'll maybe hang out with you for a week or two, and then it's a wrap. The money won't really bother them. But for the average guy, let's just appreciate the ones that appreciate you because you thinking like, oh, does this matter? Yes. And I got a quick story to tell just based off of that. This is what I really want to get into because women sometimes fail to realize that appreciate the ones that appreciate you reciprocity is still key i was just having this conversation with my boy we were talking about women cooking and the gesture of cooking and i was telling him yo i don't care if you look up a recipe it doesn't matter to me if you look up a recipe i don't care about that if you cook for me because you looked up a recipe that's great that's amazing whoa you looked up a recipe kudos to you that doesn't mean you actually like to cook that doesn't mean you actually even cook well That just means you're trying to impress me in some way. And don't get me wrong. I still appreciate it. I'm still going to knock you down at the end of the night. Cool. But you actually liking to cook and whipping something up that's dope and actually from the heart, that's lit. That's a vibe. You just looking up a recipe because you asked me 80,000 questions like, do you like Italian? Do you like Mexican? Do you like Mediterranean? Yeah, I like whatever you like. I don't care. We just met. But if you're actually someone that likes to cook, you're like, oh, let me whip you up this, you know, tortellini X, Y, Z, or damn, I'm from, I went to New Orleans last week. I saw this gumbo recipe. I think you might like it. Let me bring some over for you. That's a vibe. Like, yo, this just like try to impress me to get on my good side so I can start dropping a bag on you. It's corny, but some women do it. And that's how some women finesse men, but they do it in the easiest ways because that's the hard way. A lot of women are not going to do that. A lot of women are not even going to look up a recipe. They're going to use their body. They're going to use their features and their angles 
to finesse a lot of men. It's easy now. Post a couple of angles online, get in some cool areas in the gym, and we lit. It's up. Let me drop my OnlyFans link. Let me put a couple of things in my bio. Oh, I got a calendar I'm coming out with. Oh, I got a package or a PDF or whatever, a sexting call, whatever these... These women selling everything. It don't even matter no more. They could sell their toenail clippings and somebody going to buy it. It's just a fact. It's sad out here. The streets are sad because there's so many men that are just living life in a very odd way. So I have to bring it back to the men. Fellas, kings, you do not have to pay for these goofy women online. You can leave them alone. Trust me. If you secure the bag, if you get your resources right, you don't got to be on camera folding up your bed. You don't got to be on camera in the mirror scrubbing your beard and doing all these things to show women you're a better man. You don't got to do this. It's not cool. It's very odd and weird. Because, yo, there's like one side of men that are like, I'm not doing it anymore. And I guess they call it men going their own way. They try to incorporate that and say that's an intel. No, that's just a dude that just has come to his wit's end. He's just like, bro, I don't care anymore. He may be like, damn, that's a thought. And he can call it out in real time. But he's not caring. He's not really pressed. You got dudes that are pressed now. That's different. We not pressed. We chilling. We just looking like, yeah, you're going to keep on doing what you want to do. This is the Furious Robinson podcast. If you're here, hit the like button. Drop a comment. You see the planes. I'm trying to hit 11K subs. Tell a friend to tell a friend that we up.